Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight we have a lot to cover. I mean, you know it's going to be a good show when I've got the word Antichrist on the chalkboard. Oh, you don't want to miss this one. Mm -mm. No, come on, we got a lot to do. Hello, America. I'm going to start with a little uh, pop quiz today. What did Iran do this week? Okay, you might have answered that President Ahmoud, uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad uh, announced, I love this guy, seriously, nice beard. When it fills in, it's going to be nice. He announced this week that Iran will deliver a telling blow to global powers on February 11th, which is the anniversary of the Islamic uh, Revolution. Okay, I think he does that every year. He did do that, but that's not really the latest that nobody is. And the media, surprise, surprise, is paying attention to. This week, Iran successfully launched a rocket into space. There it is. The media yesterday was pretty much yawning. Oh, oh, look at that. Nice, nice rocket. The only thing they found interesting about the launch was that it, inside the, uh, the top of it, they launched a rat, two turtles, and a worm. Okay, other than that, they didn't go into it. But this is really important. Technically, what does this mean? Well, if he can send a missile up into space and could explode it, it could have something, you know, on the tip of it, uh-oh, might be a problem. Does that mean he can now deliver nukes if indeed they're not a peaceful nuclear plan? Or how about a EMP, something that shuts down all of our electronics? That would do much more damage than any conventional bomb or even nuclear bomb could ever do. Imagine the chaos if an EMP bomb crashed all of our computers, and I mean fried them. All the phones, all the TVs, your cars, nothing, nothing. America would be out of business overnight. Now, they don't have the power to do this yet. We'll have an expert on in just a few minutes to talk about how close they may be to tipping that thing with a weapon. But what I want to uh, stop on... and. If you've been listening to me on the radio for a while, you know I have been all over Iran and paying attention to them probably for the last eight years or so. These guys are really spooky, and you need to understand why and why Iran needs to be paid attention to. And media, feel free to pay attention here, because you might want to catalog it as well. President Obama, he has this new approach to foreign policy where he's mended all the wounds just by showing up. Not so much. In March of last year, Obama called for an engagement in honest and grounded mutual respect. Yeah. I don't know how you, I don't, I mean, really? First of all, don't even talk to me about honesty and mutual respect. The only reason you would even consider talking to this guy is because you don't understand who he is, unless you're going to keep your enemies even closer. closer. Mutual respect? He's called America the Great Satan. He's also said that our friends in Israel must be wiped off the map. The media yawns when Mahmoud Ahmadinejad says things like this. Oh, just he's crazy. It's just talk. Really? They've been trained to ignore this guy. He's the guy who cries wolf. Oh, he's not serious. He's just saying that for his people. Well, that's because I'm, nobody in the media that I have met has even bothered looking into what this guy believes, where he comes from. Here's another thing Ahmadinejad said um, that nobody pays attention to, and this is one of the things that he said a few years back that made the hair stand up on my uh, back of my neck and went, wait, 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 wait. And I remember I was standing in a newsroom full of journalists, and they were like, ah, turn it off. I said, wait a minute, what did he just say? See, the media is concerned about my language. Oh, how many times have you heard? Oh, the Tea Party goers with those signs that are going to cause some kind of global catastrophe. Because we are, we're engaging in hate speech. And of course, if you have hate speech, well, then everybody becomes a zombie. But the media doesn't pay any attention to the guy who says, I'm going to vaporize Israel. No importance on that. This is what 
made me start my search years ago. Let's see. This, he says this every year. Watch this video, please. All praise be to Allah, Allah, the Lord of the universe, and peace and blessing be upon our master and prophet Muhammad and his pure household and his noble companions. O God, hasten the arrival of Imam al-Mahdi and grant him good health and victory and make us his followers and those who attest to his rightfulness. Got it. Hasten the return of the 12th um, uh, uh, Imam, the Mahdi. Who is that? Hasten the return. The one that I saw years ago, he said, O oh Allah, help me hasten the return of the promised one. What does that mean? Well, he's a 12er. What is that? Well, if journalists weren't so busy trying to land jobs with the Obama administration, but only 14 of them have gone to work for the Obama administration now, they would look in to that phrase, Twelvers. They believe that the Mahdi, or the Twelfth Imam, will soon return. This is end times stuff, all right? Remember, everybody thinks Christians are crazy because they believe Jesus is going to come back. Okay, got it? I want to make this clear. He's a Twelver. Most Muslims are not. Most people in Iran are not. And the reason why is because they're spooky. They believe that the return of the Mahdi needs to be hastened. It's not a good idea to return uh, the Mahdi or hasten the return of him. Because to do that, the world has to be in chaos, carnage, genocide. Okay? Think of this. I'm going to compare this to the Twelvers. This is the president of Iran, and these are Christians. So you understand, okay? Twelvers are so dangerous that at one point, the Ayatollah Khomeini, remember the guy when he died, they kept dropping him out of the coffin? That guy, he was crazy. He said Twelvers are out of their minds nuts, and he banned them. So when President Ahmadinejad says he wants to vaporize Israel, he's not trying to trick people. It's not a power bluff. He believes he's fulfilling prophecy. What prophecy? This is, I'm not a theologian. I, this is stuff that I've done in the last five, six years off the top of my head, but we're pretty close here. If you're a Christian, you know in the book of Revelation they talk about an Antichrist. Got it? We think the Antichrist is a person. Okay? I mean, it's the, think of the omen. You remember the spooky kid with the Rottweilers? That's who it is. Twelvers don't believe in the person, the Antichrist. What do they call Israel? They call Israel the little Satan, and we are the great Satan, right? So the Antichrist, to them, is us, the U.S. Okay, that's why you, you're never going to get the, oh, hey, let's just all get along. They think we're the literal Antichrist. Got it? Now, the world needs to be washed by blood. If you're a Christian, you know the world's going to be washed in blood, and then Jesus comes back, slits the, you know, splits the mountains, and is like, okay, all right, knock it off. Got it? Theirs is very, very similar. The, the promised one comes, the twelfth imam comes, and has to wash the world in blood. There's a time of, of great struggle, and Muslims are being persecuted. Remember, not all Muslims believe this, only twelvers. The world needs to be washed in blood. So when he says, hasten the return of the promised one, there must be global bloodshed, okay? You know that Jesus isn't coming until you've gone through the tribulation. He's saying, bring it on. This would be a Christian saying, if we're going to do the whole tribulation thing in seven years of mass slaughter, let's just get it over with so Jesus could come. That's crazy talk. Hasten the return of the promised one means help me wash the wor world in blood. Because then the Mahdi comes. See if this sounds familiar to Christians. This would be the tribulation. Global government in Babylon. If you're a Christian, who is setting up the global government in Babylon? That would be the Antichrist. Who's doing it? According to the Twelvers, the promised one. I think it's an H. Is that right? Does anybody know? I think it's, I think it's spelled that way. Um, one religion. 
the Mahdi comes, sets up a global government in Babylon, and they have one religion, and he kills all unbelievers. Got it? Now, let me ask you this question. Why does Rosie O'Donnell, you know, Rosie O'Donnell, she thinks that Christians are crazy. Abortion doctors killing nut jobs, that's all they are. Who thinks the Antichrist might come someday? We got to get rid of these people. They're dangerous. Radical Christians. Let me explain. Let me have her explain what she thinks of Christians. Radical Christianity is just as threatening as radical Islam. In a country like